just uh, to add what Dr. Chandra has talked about the various obesity things. Uh, another point which I would like to discuss even in my first presentation, I also talked about that I lose weight, but it just seems to come back. I think this is one of the most common complaints. Each and every person coming to your clinic for obesity management will tell you at certain point of time. I'm talking about Mr. Sunil, he's 63 year old male with BMI of 42 with Asian Indian phenotype and HbA1c is 5.9. Medical history, osteoarthritis, right hip, lumbar spine, uh, that is impeding mobility and disrupting sleep, plantar fasciitis, sleep apnea, peripheral edema, vitamin D deficiency, pre-glaucoma and pre-diabetes. And weight was highest, that was 121 kg, but now constant uh, effort has kept that weight to 111 kg, so almost 10 kg, what he has lost and maintaining. He is walking for 10 to 15 minutes only per day, that is for 3 to 5 days a week. He is a traveler, avid traveler with a self-described foodie and obesity, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoarthritis, thyroid, all are running in his family along with alcoholism. So he had tried some anti-obesity medicine also. He is using some off-label medicine also. He had taken early state and we all know that early state is very mild in doing these things. So the most important triggers here is traveling. He is a avid traveler. He is foodie. And obviously, this is controlled by the brain. So centrally acting uh, signaling pathway is playing a role. But on the other side, as Dr. Chandra has elucidated that BMI, whatever BMI, but how incapacitated that patient is and his life is affected by this arthritis, sleep apnea and spinal problems. So here, the effort what uh, so far is 8% weight loss, which was achieved with based with possible lifestyle and dietary interventions. And he has tried several anti-obesity medicines without success. Now, if you track down the story of this Mr. Sunil, that during his high school period to college to first job, he gained a lot. Then, with a conscious effort and a very low calorie diet, he reached and he dipped down to the level what he was aiming for. But again, it was gradually gaining. During that period, he has stopped smoking, which another contribution to his uh, weight gain. Then he started anti-obesity medicine. Then he reduced again, but never reached to the initial level. Then he had his marriage, he consulted also, and he's still trying, but you can see that over the period of time, he has gained a lot, and he is having some plateau around 111 cases. Now, what are the factors impacting here? Age, sex, environmental factor, stress, and the disease state, as well as the medications. And weight is causing chronic pain, and now chronic pain is limiting his physical activity to 10 to 15 minutes a day, which ideally should be more than if he really wants to lose weight. So chronic pain is having negative self-efficacy, fear of movement, and the avoidance of sedentary behavior is the cause which leads to weight gain. But weight gain will have physical disability, mood, coping, uh, sleep problem, neuroendocrine problem, which will lead to chronic pain. So now he is in this vicious cycle that weight is also high and he is suffering from chronic pain. Intervention should be we should get himself operated as early as possible for knee surgery so can we reduce this chronic pain part. At the same time we have to address his weight by intervening some uh, with some medication we have to make him lose weight so that he can have his knee surgery. So here, weight loss in people with obesity and osteoarthritis, you can see the result of 11% of weight loss. Stiffness, pain, and physical function, it improves almost by 25 to 30%, even 30-35% improvement is there.
and the greater weight loss leads to improvement in physical functioning and we have step 4 full population with the sf36 score available validated score available with the step 4 population where patient who lost 5 kg who lost 5 to 15 kg and who lost mid more than 15 kg actually the score was increasing so if patient is losing more they will have more and better function now as far as pharmacological management is concerned i told that early state is tried by this particular patient that is lipase inhibitor medication lecture was already done just uh, in a previous session and this drug works through energy wasting but then we have naltrexone bupropion fentramine topiramide semaglutide and liraglutide four another molecule approved for weight loss semaglutide 2.4 is not available in injectable form in india though it is approved but they are glp1 receptor agonist pemetramine topiramide are endorectic and naltrexone bupropion is antidepressant with opiate antagonist and they all cause this epidemic an indication is either bmi more than 30 or if patient is having BMI more than 27 with some comorbidities like this particular patient is matching this indication, we enroll this patient in clinic. Now, patient primary goal to lose weight to eligible for knee surgery. We started semaglutide in this particular study and uh, you can see that patient able, was able to cross 16% of baseline body weight and he reached HbA1c from 5.9 to 4.9 and his BMI went down from 40 to 35. So it was an excellent result. We can be happy. Patient is also happy. Patient lost another 15 kg and become eligible for surgery. And patient is manageable for GI adverse side effects. So patient is okay with that because he is losing. And now patient is having a different mindset about food, able to make different choice. But it was over and patient was off treatment. Now what happened? And after stopping treatment, it started gaining again. So patient was 112 kg initially, went down to 95 kg. Again, now patient is 100 points. So in step one extension, where actually we followed patient for the uh, post treatment plan, you can see the 68 weeks of treatment phase and 52 weeks of off treatment extension. Patient who are on placebo arm remain almost same, but the intervention arm has lost excellent. I mean, it was on excellent result at the end of study, but they go on getting definitely it was still. 5 kg or 6 kg lesser than their previous weight, but still the problem is they are okay. So, the question to audience is, what do you think in the next clinical step? Should we reach that anti-obesity medicine until patient falls under 25 kg per meter square and then should uh, stop this or we should restart and we should continue weight management without A1. So, all three are good, but the most important thing is that Obesity treatment is not a short-term treatment. Patient has to continue for a longer period of time. And along with that, dietary restriction, exercise change, behavioral change are very important. So here, patient has stopped treatment and patient gave it. Now what happened? That patient restarted on anti-obesity medicine. Patient was able to lose weight again. So patient lost few kgs. Knee replacement was done. And, sorry. Here, patient able to achieve this. Now, when patient is having this patio, continuous of treatment is also important. At the same time, the behavioral change and after knee replacement, change in exercise regimen, diet regimen, everything will be very important to maintain this weight for a long time. So, just to summarize my this case, I would like to say one important thing that losing weight is difficult. But maintaining weight loss is even more difficult, and that is a challenge we have to accept and we have to and motivate people, motivate our person to achieve and can maintain it for long. Thank you. So just over to you.